Our featured guest tonight is a two-time Emmy-nominated actress whose craft in both film and television has seen her work with, uh, with a true who's who of the entertainment industry, while gracing us with some truly fantastic performances across the years, from Long Road Home to Big Wednesday to Secret Sins of the Father, and the list goes on and on. Here to chat about her incredible life and career is the great Lee Purcell. Lee, welcome to the show. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. As I mentioned in the intro, you've had such an incredible life and career. But before we get into that part of your story, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your early life. Like, what was it? What was life like growing up? As I understand, you were in a military family, yeah? I was in a military family for, um, yes, I had a very uh, nonlinear childhood. A lot of people have linear childhoods. Uh, I have no idea what that's like to be born in one place and then you grow up in that place and you have the same two parents your whole life and and so forth, right? I didn't have that. Um, and mine was a bit uh, erratic. And I think uh, in a strange way that has served me well in the entertainment industry because we moved um, so many times. And then at one point we stopped moving and and that was unnatural to me. It was odd. It was like, what? When are we moving? And and we didn't. Um, it, I I liked the moving part. I liked being in a new place. Um, and we lived in interesting places. And uh, I liked that. And I did not like it when we stopped moving. So I, I, that might tell you something. I'm not sure. Did you know anybody in L.A. beforehand? I mean, had you lined up anything ahead of time or was this kind of just I don't want to say it was a, a leap of faith because seemingly you were very this is what you were going to do. You were driven, obviously. But mm -hmm. I mean, had you had anything lined up or were you just going to go and just make it happen? It was a leap of faith. I had uh, my grandmother. She lived in California. She lived in L.A., but she wasn't here at the moment because my grandmother was by coastal. She was by coastal before anybody even heard the term. Right. And so she was on her her other nursing job in another state uh, where my parents lived, and but she still had an apartment. And so she she gave me the key to her apartment, and I drove to L.A. and I had a horrible car accident upon entering L.A. and destroyed my car and nearly died, and uh, and then ended up. It's a long story, and and then ended up uh, finally in, in her after I went to the hospital. And they checked me out. And then I got to her apartment. And then I called her and said, this happened. And she said, I'm getting on a plane. And she did, uh, because she was uh, really my great champion. And she um, got on a plane. She came out. And and I, I just had, you know, I had a lot of flying glass had hit me in the face and then legs and whatever. But other than that, you know, little bruises and stuff. I, I don't know how I lived through that, but I did. I mean, my car literally flew through the air and rolled several times in the air before wow. it landed upside down on the freeway and then bounced back. So um, I had a guardian angel. I was very aware of that. And and then my uh, and then my grandmother and I went to the wrecking yard, and I said, "Oh, there's my car." And she said, "Where?" And I said, "Right there, where you're looking." And it was this tangled mess it was like it would like it had been through a crusher except for the driver's seat was intact it's really strange i had nothing left in the world everything i mean i had a few bits and pieces that a taxi driver had picked up for me on the freeway he was a wonderful man and um and other than that, i had nothing and um but i had the money i had saved which i thought would last a long time it didn't but i got a job uh working in a disco and uh, because I, I quickly learned that my little bit of money was not going to last very long. LA is expensive. It was expensive even then. And, and I uh, had a little uh, terrible little one room apartment and really horrible. And, but I, you know what? I was thrilled. I was so happy. I was on my own. I was earning money, not much, but I was earning money. I was paying my own bills. I was, walking to work because I had no car. And I was utterly happy, as we are sometimes in those in those youthful uh, time periods where we're making our own way and learning what actual life is like. How did you initially start breaking into the industry in LA? Was it commercials or, or how did that come about? 
Well, I had, I was going to, because I was a dancer, I was going to support myself dancing, but I was, I had injured my left knee mm-hmm. in the in the car crash. And even though it eventually healed and I did, was able to go back, but not for a very long time. <clears throat> so um, I got this job in a disco and I was um, selling clothes because the disco was huge and it had a boutique. And so I got a job selling clothes in the, in that. And I started meeting people. I, I vaguely knew this one person and I called him and and he was like, who? You know, and I said, remember, I met you through your family member. And he did a few things for me, but then it, it, it that turned bad pretty quickly. And, um, and my grandmother was of no help. She was a nurse, you know, so uh, even though she was incredible, you know, but certainly not in the entertainment industry. And so I just started to meet people. You know, I worked in the disco. I um, went to acting class and singing classes and dance classes and and um, couldn't dance very well yet. I mean, because of the injury. But then, um, you know, you just you just gather people to you and uh, like minded people who are artists and um and in the industry, and then somebody said to me, "You know, you're tall. You know, you're you look a certain way. You should model." And I said, "Oh God, not that again!" And uh, because I'd already done that, right? But it was like I needed to earn more money. So this this was legitimate. The other one wasn't, um, but this was legitimate. And I got introduced to the biggest modeling agency on the West Coast. They signed me right away, and so I started working as a model. And uh, I wasn't very good at it, and I didn't like it, but it was money, and and then uh, and and was paying for my rent and my food and um, you know my acting classes and so forth because my money was pretty much vanishing real quick, and and then um, and then the modeling agency said, uh, you know, you should do commercials, and and I said. Uh, no, I don't want to right now. And then and then later I decided to do commercials. And so I got the list of franchise commercial agents from the union and uh, and started with the A's on the list. And I went to the B's, got kept getting turned down. A's turned me down, B's turned me down. Ended up in the C's, almost the end of the C's. And I walked in because I I didn't know you were supposed to make an appointment. You know, I just showed up, and um, I didn't have you know a lot of nice clothes or anything. And so I went to this agency, very posh agency on Sunset Boulevard. Walked in the door, and I was I was uh, getting pretty pretty desperate. And so I said, "I'm here to see Mr. Cunningham," and they say, "You have an appointment?" "Nope, I don't." And they said, well, you need to make an appointment. I said, nope, I need to see him today. It's really important. He'll want to see me. Because, you know, when you're young, you have that kind of chutzpah. And um, and, and and they were curious about this girl. And so they went back and they talked to him and he came out. It was serendipity. Total serendipity. Unbelievable, really. And it was Bill Cunningham, who was the most amazing person. He was, and he was the biggest commercial agent. So now I had the biggest modeling agency and I had the biggest commercial agent. And it turned out, I found out much later, I reminded him of his daughter and his daughter had died of a drug overdose not long before that. And he saw something in me that he was afraid that would happen to me, even though there was no way that was gonna happen to me. But because of this tragic loss, he decided, he, he just, he was just going to take me under his wing. And that was that. And he did. And I started getting commercials. So I was doing the little bit of modeling and the commercials and still working, you know, in the disco and going to acting class, singing class, dance classes and so forth. I mean, it it is amazing what you can do um, in life when you just kind of don't have any options. Mm 